Tissue and organ damage is one of the major causes of disability globally. Regenerative medicine is one of the most promising approaches to solve these problems by regenerating new healthy tissue. However, most of the existing approaches rely only on biology and chemistry. Our study shows that geometry could play a major role in tackling these challenges. The good thing about geometry is that it's easy, safe and inexpensive. If you compare it with other options like growth factors and drugs, you don't have to pay a patent holder to use geometry. We see many types of curvature in nature, architecture and engineering structures. But it all comes down to one of the three fundamental types of curvature. It's either a plate or a ball or a saddle. A plate has two curvatures, both of them are zero, so all in all, zero. A ball has two positive curvatures, which is giving you a positive value for curvature. And a saddle has one positive and one negative curvature. And that would mean a negative total curvature. Complex geometrical features cannot be easily made using conventional manufacturing techniques. That's where 3D printing saves the day. We have used two-photon polymerization, which is a high-accuracy, small-scale manufacturing technique to create our complex geometrical fields. By interfacing these very complex curved substrates with bone-like cells, we have observed different responses depending on the geometry of the substrate. Specifically, these cells prefer to settle and grow on the concave substrates and on the local concave regions of the convex substrates. These surfaces are characterized by at least one negative principal curvature. This trend was observed for all the different geometries we have designed, and more interestingly, also on two different substrate materials, which we have investigated in our study. A further insight into the organization of cells collectively in the concave regions revealed more interesting findings, namely the formation of suspended cell sheets, which are anchored to the bottom of the concave shape by cell bridges, indicating that the cells could actually change completely the original landscape, which would be encountered by the newly migrating cells. Last but not least, we have also observed the alignment of actin fibers along the curvature of the substrates, and all in all, these geometry-guided cellular responses showed us that this cue can be part of the biophysical cues to consider for optimizing the 3D porous scaffolds, for example, for bone applications. Ultimately, however, there is a limitation to the amount of negative curvatures that you could use in any single object. There is a mathematical restriction to the sum of all the positive and negative curvatures in any single object. That would mean that if you use too much negative curvatures somewhere, you would have to use positive curvatures elsewhere to keep the sum of all the curvatures constant. So there is a limited budget of negative curvatures and you have to use it wisely to design biomaterials that maximize tissue regeneration. <laughs>